The distance between two points in space is the square root of the sum of the squares of the coordinate differences. The set of points with constant distance rho from a point defines a sphere. <clears throat> The dot product between two vectors allows to compute the length of a vector as well as the angle between two vectors. The angle formula can serve as the definition of the angle if one notes the gauche schwarz inequality. Lines and planes can be parameterized. A line has one parameter, a plane has two parameters. The cross product between two vectors is a vector perpendicular to both. It allows to get the normal vector to a plane and link the implicit and parametric versions of the plane. The cross product also enables area computation and to compute the distance between a point and a line. Functions of two variables can be visualized as graphs in three dimensions or then illustrated by plotting the level curves to various values in three dimensions uh, where we can no more draw the graph of a function, the contour plot still works and produces contour surfaces. <clears throat> a parameterized curve is a map from a parameter interval AB to the plane or to three dimensional space. If the parameter T represents time, then R of T describes the motion of a particle. The first derivative is called the velocity, the second derivative is called the acceleration. The length of the velocity is the speed. The arc length of a curve integrates the speed up over the parameter interval. The length of the cross product of the velocity uh, and the acceleration divided by the cube of the speed uh, is called the curvature of the curve. Both arc lengths and curvature are independent of the parameterization. When describing a point uh, using a distance to the origin and the angle to the positive x-axis, we get polar coordinates. Together with the z-coordinate, this produces cylindrical coordinates. Some geometric objects can be described nicely in these coordinates. The equation r equal 1, for example, in the plane is a circle. The equation r equal 1 in space is a cylinder. If you use a second angle phi, we can write the polar radius of r as a rho times sine phi and the height z as rho cosine phi. This gives the spherical coordinate system. The radius rho is always non-negative. The angle phi is in the interval 0 pi and the angle theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. If a surface is described by three functions from a parameter domain r to space, we get the parameterization of a surface. And when fixing one of the parameters, we get curves called grid curves. The parameters are often denoted by u and v, but other variables are used like s and t or x and y for parameterizations of graphs. A function is continuous at a point like, x, like 0, 0 if there exists a value towards which f, x, y converges when x, y approaches this point. We see two examples in the situation displayed to the left. A continuation to 0, 0 is possible. Uh, it, in this case, f, 0, 0 is 0. To the right, in the right case, the limit depends on from which side, from which direction we uh, approach 0, 0. The function is not continuous at 0, 0. When differentiating with respect to one of the variables in a function of several variables, we get partial uh, uh, derivatives. Clairaut's theorem tells that the order of differentiation does not matter, uh, but Clairaut needs that the function is continuously differentiable in each of the variables. The topic of partial differential equations allows to practice taking partial derivatives. It is an important topic in particular because many basic laws of nature are partial differential equations. It is good to know the transport, the heat, the wave and the Burgers equation, as well as the Laplace equation. They are prototype systems for more complicated laws in nature. The best linear approximation of a function at a point is called the linearization. The function LXY is a function that takes the function value of the point plus linear corrections, which involve the first partial derivatives uh, which are also organized as a gradient vector. Linearization allows to estimate the function near a point where one knows the value. If you use the gradient vector for the derivative of the function and the velocity vector for the derivative of a curve, the multivariable chain rule looks the same as in one dimension. The consequence is the fact that the gradient is perpendicular to the level curve or level surface of a function. To get the equation for a tangent line or tangent plane, we use the gradient vector to get the coefficients. The constant d can then be obtained by plugging in the point x0, y0. For functions of three variables, we get the tangent plane. For functions of two variables, we get the tangent line. The directional derivative in a direction v is defined as the dot product of the gradient with v. If we go in the direction of the gradient, uh, we increase the function value. Special case, and the gradient direction is the direction of steepest ascent. 
The second derivative test allows in many cases to decide whether a critical point is a minimum, a maximum, or a subtle point. An important role in that test plays the discriminant D. The three basic cases, minimum, maximum, or subtle point, are displayed here. When looking at critical points under a constraint, one is led to the Lagrange equations. Together with the equation of the constraint, they tell that the gradient of the vector and the gradient of the constraint are parallel. The, param the parameter lambda, which appears, is called the Lagrange multiplier. To find global maxima, we look at local maxima as well as the behavior, the boundary, or at infinity. On a closed and bounded region, there is always a global maximum and a global minimum. This is also called Bolzano's extreme value theorem. Double integrals can be reduced to single integrals for special regions. We have a type dy dx integrals or type dx dy integrals. On rectangles, Fobini's theorem assures that one can switch the order of integration. When integrating in polar coordinates, the area element is r dr d theta. A typical integral is when the angle is restricted to some interval a, b, and the radius goes from some value c of theta to d of theta. The surface area of a surface integrates uh, the length of r u cross r v over the region r. It is a double integral. A triple integral can be reduced to a single integral, or then a single integral of double integrals, or then to a double integral of single integrals. The first method is often used in single variable calculus. The reduction to a double integral is especially needed uh, if the cross sections are not simple. It is uh, and mostly used in multivariable calculus. In integrating in spherical coordinates, we have to include the integration factor rho squared sine phi. The volume of a sphere can quickly be computed as such as the sphere is a cubit in that theta rho phi space. One can remember the rho square sine phi also because rho sine phi is r. A vector field in the plane attaches to each point in the plane a vector pq. A vector field in space attaches to each point in space a vector pqr. Some vector fields are gradient fields. Uh, one can test whether f is a gradient field with a Clairol test. The line integral of a vector field along a curve integrates up the dot product between the force and the velocity, force is f. That product is power and the line integral can be thought of as work. The fundamental theorem of line integrals assures that for vector fields which are gradient fields one ex can express uh, the work as the difference of function values it allows for fast computation of line integrals, but only if the vector field is a gradient field. Green's theorem is a theorem for regions in the plane, two-dimensional plane, bound, bound by a curve C. The curve is oriented so that the region is to the left. There can be several curves. The double integral of the curl of F over the region is the line integral of F along the boundary. In three dimensions, the curl of a vector field is a vector field again. The divergence, however, is a scalar field, a function. The flux of a vector field through a surface is a double integral, double integral of the dot product of f with r u cross r v. It is the amount of field which passes through the surface in unit time. Stokes' theorem equates the flux of the curl of a vector field through a surface with the line integral of f along the boundary. The orientation of the curve has to match the orientation of the surface. The surface is to the left. The divergence theorem finally equates the flux of a vector field through a surface with a triple integral of the divergence over the interior. And there are four major integral theorems. The fundamental theorem of line integral works both in two and three dimensions. In uh, two dimensions, we also have Green's theorem. And the analog of Green's theorem in three dimensions is Stokes' theorem. Finally, there is the divergence theorem in three dimensions. <laughs>